Next topic is principal components analysis. Principal components analysis, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take a lot of variables. I use the word word a lot here on purpose, meaning that you might have four variables, it could be somewhere between four variables, it could be four variables, it could be 40 variables, or 140 variables. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a way to come up with a few, one, two, two, three, or four variables that that they are the compromise of the linear variation, linear combination of these a lot of variables. And the way to make sense um, if the, the way to make sense make sense out of this is that imagine you're running a cider shop and you have hundred different varieties of cider and you're trying to wait you're trying to find a way to organize these different varieties of cider so it will make sense to your customers. You can of course take them and organize them by the tardiness. So this is the least tardiest one and then the one a little bit tardy after that and then goes on all the way to the tardiest one. Or you can organize them by how bitter it is, starting from zero bitterness to all the way to the top of the scale. Or you can look at how fruity it is, how fizzy it is. This kind of, so principal components analysis makes it easier in a way to create a common column to say tastiness of these ciders, different varieties of cider. So it will take values from your bitterness, yeastiness, fruitness, fizziness, and then put in a bucket, say, take 20% of this, 30% of this, 10% of this, and build me a new variable called tastiness. And so that will be my first principal component. And it will create another linear combination, and that will be my second principal component. Instead of this one being tastiness, that one be I don't know, easier to digest. And it will and then it will be another principal component and with with a new variable name. So the principal components is a variable reduction technique. So you take your a lot of variables and bring them into a meaningful few variables so you can take your big data set and organize it in a way that first it will be easy to visualize and also easy to make sense out of it. So let's look at it as an example. What I will do is I have a data set. This is a data set for solubility of different chemical component, chemical compounds. And I have information about the, either the amount of octanol, ether, chloroform, and on. I have about six, six different columns. And I'm trying to come up with a way to organize these instead of, I know I can't visualize six different variables, maybe in a way to visualize it or in a way to express my variable, put all my compounds into different bins. So how would I do that? Under Analyze, Multivariate, now I will select the principal components. What I would want to do is I would select all the variables that I'm interested in, that I'm trying to reduce the numbers of, and I can drag them into my Y column box and I will, you will have access, you will have a chance to decide what type of estimation method you would, you would want to use. I would recommend you go look at the help manual and understand each of these methods and how they work. But in most cases, the default option will work. And next I will do OK. Once I, do, I say OK, that it will build eigenvalues for me. And I can see the first eigenvalue is way more prominent than others. And if I want to see what they look like and my principal components, I can either I can create my principal components in the correlations, covariances are unscaled. By the way, jump will automatically scale your variables while it's built on the principal components. And if you want them to be unscaled, you can select unscaled option. And if you want to see the covariance matrix, see what the correlation be between each of these variables are. You can look at, you can find them under the red triangle. You can look at your eigenvectors. These are basically it shows how much of each of these variables are original variables will be in the principal components. What the impact of is what the impact of each variable is on the principal components. 
And next, what I, I would want to do is, since I'm happy, and I'll, one more thing here to look at is the script plot. Script plot shows you the eigenvalues compared to a number of components. And after certain certain cutoff value, after three components, my eigenvalue is not changing much. And once I have these principal components, my whole goal was to reduce these variables to come up with compound variables, which are linear combinations of what I currently have. So if I go back and save my principal components on my data table, jump will ask me how many principal components that I'm interested in. in I can look at my, let me close this for a second. And as you can see here on my summary plots, my first component, first principal component, is able to explain close to 80% of the variation. My second principal component is able to explain close to 16% of variation. If I add them up, about 96% of variation could be explained by these two new variables that I just created, which contains information about, the, about my full data table. So let's go back to this here, triangle, save principal components, and let's save two. So okay. If I go back to my data table, now I have two new columns, principal component one, principal component two. And if I want to see how these are built, I can right click and see my formula. And I can see it's made up of 45% of octanol, 34% of ether, 36% of chloroform, 36% of benzene, 34% of carbon tetrahydrochloride, tetrachloride, and 30% of hexane, and I have a constant of negative 1.13. So principal component analysis, PCA, is a very easy to use variable reduction technique, and it's, it's been used in the past to reduce the number of data being stored. And nowadays, since we don't have much data storage limitations, that use is not necessarily one of the main uses anymore. Nevertheless, it will be a great way of reducing the number of your variables. If, I, if you want to go back and recreate your original variables, you can always take this formula and inverse it.